I think quickly to just sort of talk about Black Mirror, this has become one of Netflix's sort of premier franchises, one of its most popular shows. Black Mirror originally started as a science mm-hmm. fiction series through um, a British television network, Channel 4, before they eventually made their way to Netflix. Um, I believe back in 2011 is when they first started to premiere on Netflix and the episodes were licensed out to the company. And then eventually Netflix sort of purchased the rights to produce future iterations and future seasons of the series. And ever since then, it's really blown up. It is an anthology series, very much inspired by what we saw out of the Twilight Zone back in the 60s, telling these individual standalone episodes. And a lot of the episodes sort of focus on dystopian elements, unhappy endings, science fiction, technology, futuristic worlds, all that stuff is kind of really the focal point of Black Mirror. And I think we've seen some really, really excellent episodes of Black Mirror, especially at the height of the popularity of the series, probably between that 2016 and 2017 era. And we've also gotten some not so great episodes. That's just kind of the nature of anthology series as you would get them. But it's been four years since the last Black Mirror series uh, back in 2019. That one wasn't that well received. I think a lot of people came out of that one thinking, okay, this left a lot to be desired. But we are now coming back here in 2023 with five brand new installments to the Black Mirror franchise. And so I know you still have to catch up with a few of the episodes, but I just kind of want to start and talk about, you know, your thoughts about Black Mirror Mirror as as a whole, your relationship to it. And so far out of what you've seen, what do you think about this new interpretation and new series thus far? Man, I absolutely love Black Mirror, man. I think it came and premiered at a time that made sense for the state of the world right the concept that every black mirror episode would in 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 ingest and its dna would would contain something having to do with technology (laughs) usually uh it, it, it would not turn out for the better or usually it would just create a world that was different from the world we were in but not too far off and definitely possible for the most part from the world we're in. I absolutely love that idea. Also the idea that when your phone is off, it serves as a black mirror. I love that idea too. That whole concept I think is really cool as, as well as the magic uh, idea of, of black mirrors and all of that and so on and so forth. So coming into black mirror man i was like oh is this what this tv show is of course a lot of us are watching season one we kind of hear about it late season one you know not necessarily at the beginning of season one right because like you said it was on a different uh platform so i'll everybody kind of got to black mirror a little bit late for the most part the masses did but when we all figure out what's going on everyone's like oh man this is great but not only is it great it can be depressing and i think that's the scariest thing about black mirror for a lot of us is how close it really is to being real, how close this technology is to happening, how an episode like, I forgot the the name of it, but the one where you can reverse memories and look at each other's memories and find out somebody's cheating on you (laughs) and stuff. It's not that far off. And I think that is also the intrigue of the show is a lot of us click the next episode and, and go, Okay, but what other ideas do you have for this technology? What could be next? What did what 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 else, what other crazy thing could happen? Not only that, another one other thing I have to say I really like a Black Mirror about Black Mirror is they don't only play with horror. They play with love stories like San Junipero, one of the, you know, more popular episodes. They play with horror. They play with really any and everything under the sun, even some action stuff. I know you're not a big fan of, uh, what is it, Bandersnatch? Isn't that Black Mirror? No, I know you're not a big fan of Bandersnatch, but it's still a swing, you know what I mean, of something that is uh, an idea, a different idea. Um, So I I like the experiments that comes with Black Mirror, man. And, and, And I think coming into this season, it's pretty much the same thing. And I think, I think what's interesting about this season of Black Mirror is, uh, season six sounds like a lot, but it, it feels like not into until now in this moment of season six. Do I feel like one, the depression is really getting to people. I heard somebody say I could only watch two episodes or something like that because they were like, yeah, I, it's too much. It's too much. And I think I think it has to do with all of the artificial intelligence stuff we're hearing in in the in the, in the media right now, um, in, in the news, uh, all the other technological advancements that we're hearing happen in now that we've 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 kind of caught up to black mirror technically not 100 percent technology wise but the idea of black mirror and we're all, all accustomed to the idea i think it's getting a more scary for a lot of people um and so i think i think by that same token though 
it's becoming less and less surprising when a when a new episode happens. It's becoming a little less jarring when a new Black Mirror episode comes on because you're like now you're like. Mm, I could kind of see that coming as an as a concept or as an idea, and that's kind of what what I'm I'm feeling now um, out of Black Mirror, man. So yeah, it's 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 a weird spot to be in, but uh, I'm still going to enjoy the content. I'm still I'm still going to enjoy the the concept of Black Mirror and these new te- technological episodes. But I absolutely understand, it. and I'm also being keen to uh, the new ideas that they're coming out with episode to episode. And so I, but there, there are seasons of, of Black Mirror that are going to be better than others, but this one tends to feel, I think, a little more wishy-washy because of like the the nature of, I think it's getting harder to tell Black Mirror episodes because of everything I just said. Yeah, th- those are really good points Um, just due to the fact that some of this stuff does start to feel alarmingly close to reality and the things that we deal with on a daily basis. And in particular, this new season starts to play with a lot of those ideas. And I guess just like in terms of my overall thoughts, the series so far has been really enjoyable and really entertaining. And it does get you to contemplate and think about a lot of these concepts and some of the things that might be cautionary tales versus like actual realities that me- we might already be living in. And if you just end up with something happening to be in the in the wrong person's hands, it might just come to fruition, you know, one of these days. And so that that kind of exists on that that really um that really close proximity to just like what we deal with emotionally every day. But with this new season in particular, I don't know if I was necessarily excited because that last season was pretty disappointing for me. It didn't really add anything all that new to the formula of what we've come to know out of Black Mirror. But I was still interested and I did still want to check out just like what the what the new concepts and what the new thematic things that they were going to sort of explore and talk about. Um, I'll quickly just kind of run through, you know, each of these episodes B by B, but I know we could talk about Joan is Awful is like the premiere episode um, that a lot of people are talking about. But with Locke Henry, which is the second episode, it was mo- mostly spent on discussing just the idea behind I think this meta commentary with true crime documentaries and the fact that people tend to capitalize off of real life tragedies and I found this episode to be super interesting just because that also exists as like a real life thing and I think that this is probably the most grounded episode out of the new Mm -hmm. pack and it is a little bit slower a little bit more quiet I think compared to some of the other Um, other stories that we got this season but I did like it for the fact that again like we're in this real big true crime phase of just like pop culture now where we're examining these real life scenarios and at what cost you know does it become to our enjoyment where we're watching like somebody's life just really unfold before our very eyes and also also just like denigrate itself to a point where we're getting enjoyment out of people suffering and I think that this episode in particular had some pretty good commentary on that I did really enjoy Beyond the Sea. That episode has Aaron Paul and also Josh Hartnett, who is in the midst mm-hmm. of like a renaissance. Josh Hartnett is like really yeah. coming back in a big way. <laughs> and I love yeah. that um, for him. He's mm-hmm. going to be an Oppenheimer in a few weeks as well. And I really, really enjoyed this episode. This was a really kind of just, I think just a really damning episode in terms of like what it means to just not exist within yourself and just the consequences of that of being absent. And, and, and it takes a really high sci-fi concept and, 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 it, and applies it to just like this real, this real couple, this real married couple and, and, and how that just impacts them. Just the fact that they've, they've been absent from one another. And then there's an episode like demon 79, which I really enjoyed. Won't get into that specifically, but it's basically about this person who's living this super ordinary life and a demon comes into her life and basically tells her, you have to kill three people to prevent the apocalypse. And it's like, well, what the hell that just upends their entire day. And this person that has to carry out these murderous acts, they are not at all like that. That is not in their DNA at all. That <laughs> it's actually a stretch for them to have to go to that place. Um, my, my least favorite out of the pack is Maisie day, um, which, which is unfortunate because I was somewhat looking forward to that one, but that one just didn't really, I don't know. I think it went too far into the supernatural. It, it, it does incorporate a lot of supernatural elements. It's also the shortest episode, but um, it's really examining paparazzi culture. And and while that can be interesting, I just feel like paparazzi culture isn't as relevant to maybe some of these other topics that we're exploring. Because like paparazzi, while they're still a thing, that felt like a, a relic of 90s culture. So it almost kind of felt like we mm-hmm. were going backwards. And Zazie Beach, she's like the lead star. She's fine in it. But I think the episode just kind of goes a little bit too far beyond its concept by the end of it. Um, but that brings us to Joan is Awful, which I know a lot of people have seen. That's sort of the lead off episode for this season. And it stars, yep. you know, a, a lot of very notable people, most notably Selma Hayek. Also, Annie Murphy is kind of the lead of the episode as well. And this is examining, I think, things that we talk about all the time, whether it's AI or deepfake te- technology or streaming and all 
altogether or just, you know, mm-hmm. the idea of licensing out your rights and, and just your life and, and who can use that information and who can, you know, sort of employ that to, to do whatever they want. And so this is, again, sort of another cautionary tale. But um, with my thoughts, with the rest of the episodes out of the way, I do want to, you know, sort of kind of explore your thoughts and get, get your reaction to Jonah's Awful and how do you feel, feel about the episode? Man, Jonah's Awful is like... Like you said, I love I, I really do like the meta commentary on it. Um, I love the fact that they used Annie Murphy too, like somebody who is just she she is in like a such an interesting spot, I think, right now in her career where she's not super A listy, but she is Emmy Award winning slash <laughs> uh a, a decently well known face uh uh nowadays in Annie Murphy. And, and so I love how they they kind of insert her in in the middle of things uh uh again not to spoil it too much but she's like quite literally in the middle um of these levels and of of um of this episode and it works out perfectly it's funny because it 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 really is commentary on itself within the episode but this is i think i think jonah's awful is a good example of being self-aware and having commentary on yourself but you kind of get it um, and it just works out and it really is just inception of, of inception of inception. But I liked it um, because of that. not only that, but it, it was pretty surprising for me how involved Selma Hayek was in this episode. It was very surprising for me. I absolutely love um, that concept of of of, of uh, her being here as well, man. But uh, not only that, I love the. I think the realism of this episode, right, where Joan is awful is is literally supposed to be about this normal woman <laughs> who is just working she has to fire somebody and now her life is in real time on i forgot what it was called in the episode but pretty much netflix her her, her life is in real time on netflix and it's something about that that feels so weird and so crazy and it's easy to put your yourself in those shoes though too to think about okay what would happen if that was happening to me what if i did something i was doing some stuff that was quote unquote questionable to other people who are watching a TV show of me or and, and what would that look like? And so it I that that did be, kind of become the horror part of it. Um but I also what I do like about it is the what what's important about the episode too, I think, is the fight to dismantle these ideas that exist within what was happening in the episode between AI, between like you said, people buying likeness and being able to do whatever they want with it between it's not just commentary for the second commentary. It's like, should we be doing this? It's like a big question mark <laughs> at the end of the sentence of Jonah's awful. Like, should we be doing this? Because, you know, there are examples, real life examples of this happening already, man. So I enjoyed um, um, Jonah's awful. Not a perfect episode by any means, but I think the ideas and the points that they were trying to hit in the episode were 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 actually very much worth talking about and i think it's something we'll be talking about um here for a while yeah i think that this is definitely the most quote-unquote classic episode of black mirror this is the one that feels like it's most akin to what we've seen out of the series so far and i really like the concept and the idea behind it for sure i think that they actually do tackle some really interesting stuff again just that whole idea of like personalized content even we know that netflix is very much leaned into that because of their really pioneering of the streaming platform and 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 of the technology just the idea that everything is sort of delivered to you on a silver platter because it is what you like and so they're just going to consistently feed you the stuff that you like and this show sort of takes place you know within that sort of concept and idea but then it takes it to a whole nother level because now joan as a character is not even like the main character in her own, her own story anymore she becomes like a side character and almost a standby view of of everything unfolding mm-hmm. and she just has no control of it and just the idea of losing control and not really making your own choices like it can go into those deep levels for sure um ultimately the episode was just fine for me i just think because i didn't feel that the actual content of the story and the episode itself went any deeper beyond the, the premise i think for a lot of it became it became a little bit repetitive for me where you just kind of see like this mm-hmm. constant like oh yeah, this is actually not the story. And then this is not the story. And then we're just going to go deeper and deeper and deeper and show all these different layers, um, which again is like interesting and exciting at first, but I don't necessarily feel like it went much deeper beyond that. And and, and at some point it kind of felt a little bit on the nose as well. It felt like that they were just tackling something that I think is super obvious to many people. And it's not necessarily all that deep and contemplative. It's really just kind of examining what we already know to be true, um, which is Mm -hmm. fine, but maybe it would have been a little bit more 
impactful if this episode came out like four or five years ago or maybe even like six mm. or seven years ago i think that we could yeah. have been like thinking about the future now like streaming is the norm it is in our in, in our lives so much and just the idea of like not having control i think people very much recognize this like even when you just mm -hmm. you know put your phone away and a personalized ad comes up after you talk about something like we all know what that means it represents now and they kind of even name check that idea so it was cool but i think as a pack this was overall a pretty good balance collection of episodes i think that this is definitely mm -hmm. a step up from the previous season and i do think that there's more stories that they can tell in the future black mirror can go for as long as they can come up with these original and inventive stories um just as long as they continue to be interesting i think that that's really going to be the determining factor as to whether or not it's going to maintain its popularity over the years but folks those are all of our thoughts on season six of black mirror if you've checked out the new collection of episodes on netflix definitely hit us up and let us know what you think